In Matthew 5, 17, Jesus says, Do not think that I've come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. It's amazing because not only does the way Jesus teach, live, and debate situate him within Second Temple Judaism, but I think Matthew 5.17 is his emphatic statement that he did not come to oppose Judaism. But before I explain why, I want to address the common Christian interpretation of Matthew 5.17 that I think Pastor Andy Stanley precisely states. He says, Jesus did not come to abolish, as in destroy, the validity of, or undermine the credibility of the law. Jesus came to bring it to a designated end. In fulfilling the law, he made it obsolete. I understand why Pastor Stanley and many Christians think this way. There's a long interpretive history that reads Jesus over and against Judaism, which is a faulty assumption to begin with. But let's read Pastor Stanley's case. The Greek term translated fulfill is used by both Matthew in the Sermon on the Mount as well as Luke in his recitation of Jesus' synagogue message. In both instances, the term means to bring to a designated end. If the law were a homework assignment, he was completing it. If the law were a speech, he was concluding it. If the law were a plane, he was landing it. This was his way of saying God's conditional, temporary covenant with Israel was coming to an end the intended from the beginning end. When God established his covenant with Israel, he set a timer. According to Jesus, the time had run out. He goes on to explain what Jesus means by fulfill through an analogy. He says, if you had an overwhelming amount of debt that you wanted to rid yourself of, one option would be to declare bankruptcy. In that case, your obligation would not be fulfilled, just removed. But if someone came along and paid off your debt, the obligation would be fulfilled and the burden of fulfilling that obligation would be removed as well. Jesus fulfilled as an ended the necessity of the Jewish law. Just as you don't abolish a home by completing its construction, Jesus did not abolish the law when he fulfilled it, but in fulfilling it, he made it obsolete. There's a lot there. But essentially, Stanley cites a Greek-English lexicon of the New Testament, also known as BDAG, as evidence that in Matthew 5.17, fulfill, the Greek word plerao, means to bring to a designated end, as in make the Torah obsolete. BDAG is an excellent Greek lexicon that has been described as, without doubt, the best tool of its kind that exists in any language. But Stanley's argument doesn't work. Because the specific meaning of plerao that Stanley cites from BDAG actually contradicts his thesis. BDAG has six definitions and multiple sub-definitions describing the possible meanings of plerao. Matthew 5.17 is listed under definition number four, which is to bring to a designed end, fulfill. And notice it says designed end, not even Stanley's designated end. But you shouldn't stop there when using a lexicon. Notice the note about Matthew 5.17 specifically. BDAG says, Depending on how one prefers to interpret the context, plerao is understood here either as fulfill, do, carry out, or as to bring to full expression, show it forth in its true meaning, or as fill up, complete. In none of these definitions does plerao mean to make obsolete. That's not what it says. When you read Matthew 5.17 with the various meanings BDAG provides here, there is no indication that this was Jesus' way of saying God was ending his covenant with Israel. A close reading of Matthew 5.17 in its Jewish context indicates that Jesus is saying the opposite of what Stanley is proposing. The Hebrew equivalent of the Greek word plerao is Lekayim, from the root kum, which means establish, to confirm, to stand up. This word is found in Mishnah Perkei Avot 4.9, and this text says, Rabbi Jonathan said, Whoever fulfills the Torah out of a state of poverty, his end will be to fulfill it out of a state of wealth. Whoever discards the Torah out of a state of wealth, his end will be to discard it out of a state of poverty. The same root kum is found in Deuteronomy 27 verse 26. Accursed is one who will not uphold the words of this Torah to perform them. Keeping this in mind, Dr. Nicholas Shazer explains that when Jesus says he is fulfilling the Torah, he is establishing it, doing it rightly. 
And this makes sense because as I explained in this video, Jesus lives this out through his observance of the commandments, understanding that right halakha must prioritize loving God and loving one's neighbor. This reading also corresponds well with the Greek. Bidag lists the meaning of plerao in Matthew 5.17 with the following definitions. Fulfill, as in do, carry out, or as bring to full expression. Show it forth in its true meaning, or as fill up, complete. I think Dr. Craig Keener is right when he says, To fulfill God's law was to confirm it by obedience and demonstrating that one's teaching accorded with it. When we keep in mind Jesus' commentary on various commandments in the Torah in Matthew 5-7 through and throughout his teachings, I think my friend Ben, a graduate student in rabbinic studies, articulates the meaning of Jesus' words in Matthew 5-17 best when he says that Jesus came to bring the observance of Torah to its fullness. So what does Jesus mean when he says he did not come to abolish the Torah? Well, let's read Matthew 5 verse 17 through 19. Jesus says, Do not think that I have come to abolish the Torah or the prophets. I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. Amen, I tell you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or seraph shall pass away from the Torah, until all things come to pass. Therefore, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments, and teaches others the same, shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever keeps and teaches them, this one shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. The Greek word for abolish is kataluo, which shows up twice in verse 17, and when Jesus says, whoever breaks one of the least of these commandments, in verse 19, the word the TLV translates as breaks is luo, which can also be translated as abolish. Dr. Matthew Thiessen argues that the use of kataluo in 2 Maccabees, 4 Maccabees, and Josephus should inform how we understand the meaning of kataluo in Matthew 5.17. Jewish context is key, and when you see how these authors use this word, I think you'll see why. So let's start with 4th Maccabees. In chapter 17, the author describes how the Seleucid king Antiochus IV executed a mother and her seven sons because they refused to obey the king's command to eat pork. Antiochus attempted to outlaw Jewish practice to rid his empire of Judaism. And chapter 17 verse 9 says this, here are buried an old priest, an old woman, and seven sons because of the violence of the tyrant who wished to abolish the way of life of the Hebrews. In this verse, abolish kataluo refers to Antiochus's attempt to stop Jews from observing the commandments. Josephus says Antiochus carried away by his ungovernable passions put pressure upon the Jews to abolish their ancestral customs, leaving their infants uncircumcised and sacrificing swine upon the altar. Josephus uses abolish kataluo the same way as 4th Maccabees 17 verse 9 does. It refers to Antiochus's vicious attempt to stop Jews from practicing all of Judaism, all Jewish ways of life. The use of kataluo in 2nd Maccabees 2 verse 21 through 22 is also key. The author says that Judas Maccabeus and his brothers fought for Judaism in response to Antiochus, who was trying to abolish the commandments. It says, Judas Maccabees and his brothers fought bravely for Judaism, so that though few in number, they regained possession of the temple, famous throughout the world, and liberated the city and reestablished the laws that were about to be abolished, while the Lord with great kindness became gracious to them. I think Dr. Thiessen is right, that 2nd Maccabees, 4th Maccabees, and Josephus should inform how we understand Jesus' statement in Matthew 5.17. These texts reveal how other Jews during the time of Jesus were using the word abolish, and given this context, and that Jesus' discussion in Matthew 5, verse 17 through 19, is about keeping the commandments, it stands to reason that when Jesus says he did not come to abolish the Torah, He's not talking about undermining the Torah's validity or credibility, as Pastor Andy Stanley suggests. What Jesus is saying is that he has not come to stop Jews from keeping the Torah's commandments. He has not come to abolish Judaism. And right there, in Matthew 5, verse 17, we have Jesus' emphatic statement that he did not come to oppose Judaism. Pastor Stanley's interpretation that Jesus means he came to bring the law to a designated end, as in making it obsolete, cannot be sustained when this text is read in its Jewish context. 